Today, we'll be discussing McDonald versus the city of Chicago, one of the most important Second Amendment gun rights cases that have ever been heard at the Supreme Court. Hello and welcome to Talks on Law. I'm Joel Cohen. Today, I'm joined in person with Professor Daryl Miller of Duke Law School and the co-director of the Duke Center for Firearms Law. Daryl, it is a pleasure to be in your space today. Great to have you here and uh, great to talk about these issues. Well, we're going to talk about McDonald right now. And I guess, first off, why is this case so important? Right. So McDonald is super significant uh, for a couple of reasons. It's the case that uh, held that the Second Amendment actually applies to more than just the federal government. It applies also uh, to state and local governments as well. So whereas the watershed case in 2008, District of Columbia versus Heller, just had to deal with the Second Amendment application to federal law, with McDonald, the question was, is it going to apply to essentially all law, uh, state, local, down to your local library board? So because D.C. is this weird anomaly where it's, it's a city and it's also federal, federal law applied. So before McDonald, it wasn't clear whether or not the Second Amendment applied to the states. That's right. There's a technical issue called incorporation. So in 1833... Just uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> yes, that's right. Just as John Marshall essentially held that none of the Bill of Rights, the things that we take for granted, the First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, so forth, none of them applied to state law. Now, that began to ebb in the middle of the 20th century through a process known as selective incorporation, where the Supreme Court of the United States began to incorporate the guarantees of the Bill of Rights and apply them to state laws and local laws. The question in the McDonald case was, is the Second Amendment going to be incorporated to apply to state and local laws the same way it does applies to uh, federal law? Professor McDonald's in 2010, are you telling me that the Second Amendment wasn't uh, incorporated until so recently? Uh, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, so until 2010, the Second Amendment didn't apply to the states. But then again, it wasn't until 2008 in the District of Columbia versus Heller case that we even had a Second Amendment right that guaranteed personal rights like having a gun in the home for self-defense. So this entire area of Second Amendment litigation and, and rights is pretty new as a matter of federal constitutional law. Maybe we could do a quick look at the specifics. McDonald was was a guy who wanted to keep a gun in his house? Yeah. So uh, Otis McDonald lived in a rough part of the south side of Chicago. And what he wanted was to have a pistol in his home for purposes of self-defense. Now, the city of Chicago had a law that was, in all intents and purposes, essentially identical to the law that had been struck down in the District of Columbia versus Heller case. In some ways, it was a slam dunk. It was, as you mentioned, it was very similar. It was um, just the type of law that Heller had found to be unconstitutional. But was there concern at the time? Were people thinking, hey, maybe the Second Amendment doesn't apply to the states? Well, this gets into the nuances of what's known as selective incorporation. So um, beginning in the 20th century, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States began to take parts of the Bill of Rights and apply them uh, to state and local laws, a process known as incorporation. But and even today, not all the Bill of Rights are incorporated, at least all the rights in the Bill of Rights are not incorporated to apply uh, to states. So there was at least some question as to whether and how the Second Amendment would apply to a regulation like that in the city of Chicago. Um, and the court ended up deciding in a somewhat fractured opinion that it does apply and who drafted this, uh, the opinion of the court? Right. This was an opinion that was written by Justice Alito, writing for a fragmented court. This is a little bit um, technical, but there are two ways in which um, the justices, the, the conservative justices on the court, um, ended up thinking about the incorporation question. The one is to incorporate through the due process clause of the 14th Amendment, which is the mechanism by which most incorporation questions have been decided. 
The second was uh, through a provision of the 14th Amendment called uh, privileges or immunities that essentially guarantees everyone the privileges or immunities of citizenship. That's the route that Justice Thomas uh, took in writing a separate opinion. But uh, as a practical matter, whether incorporation happens through the due process clause or privileges or immunities, um, it still applies uh, to affect and restrain what uh, states and localities can do with regard to gun regulation. And am I right that Justice Scalia had uh, a bit of a different approach? Why Justice Scalia's opinion is important is he characterizes the nature of the question about the right of the uh, that Second Amendment guarantees to keep and bear arms in a historical lens. He says we essentially we know what the contours of the right are by contemporary regulations that are enacted around the same time as the Second Amendment. And so this is what begets a kind of historical analysis of gun regulation. This concurrence by Scalia is Am I right in some ways foreshadowing what happened much more recently in the Bruin decision, which created what is now the test for Second Amendment uh, jurisprudence? Absolutely. I think uh, taking Heller and then McDonald and then Bruin, taking those together, it's pretty clear uh, that there is a a cohort of the court that wants to look historically for understanding what the scope and meaning of the Second Amendment is. Um, And this is right in the middle of of that train of of decisions. So what would you say in sum would be the legacy of McDonald? Well, I mean, the incorporation question, which is answered in McDonald, uh, is incredibly significant because the vast swath of gun regulation in America is not federal gun regulation. It's gun regulation by states. It's gun regulation by you know, the local county commissioners. It's uh, gun restrictions uh, in schools or, you know, in public parks or in library districts. And so the fact now that this entire body of law uh, is now subject to Second Amendment challenge is incredibly significant. Daryl Miller teaches constitutional law at Duke Law School. Professor, it was such a pleasure. Thank you.